Hello my lovelies, I'm Ray and welcome back to Fan Fiction Monday, Monday, Monday. I, I don't know what you expect from me anymore. But yes, another fan fiction for all you lovelies. And today, I don't actually know what I have for you. I'm gonna be completely honest. Like, most time when I do these, it's either like, Oh, this is like the worst fan fiction I've read, or this is the most bizarre one. And this one, I'm just confused. By the way, this one's gonna be a Gravity Falls one. Called... For Love. So yeah, that's gonna be... Uh, oh boy. I have no idea what I'm getting myself into. I literally read like, a chapter and a half and was like... What am I doing? Let's get on with it though. On a fine Saturday morning, Dipper and Mabel were by the stream catching fish. Dipper had his right hand under his chin, waiting for the fish to cling onto the hook. He then looked over to his sister, who had more luck than him. Fish piled up at her side, and this seemed to have bothered him. How'd you get so many so fast? Dipper said. Do you have any bait? Mabel said. Dipper reeled the hook out of the water and face palmed himself. He reaches for the bucket of worms behind him and drove a worm onto the hook gently. The hook was then lowered into the water as the worm was still on. Dipper waited for a while until the hook shook. Surely, it did. Dipper reeled in the hook and found a small fish attached to it. He let out a sigh. Could have been bigger, Dipper said. Ha. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. This is a show about children. <laughs> At least you caught a fish, Mabel said, trying to brighten Dipper's mood. I'll be back, Dipper said, standing upright and walking into the woods. Maybe different bait can bring in bigger ones. I guess so. Oh, another fish, Mabel said. Dipper brushed past the tall plant life crowding his path. He had walked down the path to the mystery shack and was stopped by an awful odor. Dipper coughed at the smell. <coughs> and jeez, what a horrible smell! Somehow the smell was causing him to hallucinate. Trees began to triple in numbers and dance around in a circle. The sun waved to him and gave him an evil grin. The smell is worsening with every second. Fucking like... 420 blazes up in this bitch. <laughs> Dipper's eyes started to thin. He spun in his own circle and fell down, knocked out unconscious by whatever that smell had been. A dark shadow was by his side. It copied him. Ooh, spoopy. Mabel stopped fishing as a pile of fish was extremely high. She looked to the tall grass as her twin brother returned. His pupils were somehow red, but that wasn't what Mabel was actually paying attention to. So where's your better bait? Mabel asked. Dipper had looked around himself and retrieved a slug. <laughs> Must have dropped it. He said as his voice was slightly more deep than it was before. He attached the slug to the hook and then let the hook sink into the water. A fish caught onto his hook and he reeled in the hook, seeing a much larger fish on the hook. That was a lot of times to be saying hook in the same goddamn sentence, holy shit. So I guess slugs help you get bigger fish, Mabel said. Yeah, I can see that, Dipper said with his words trailing off in a deep, relaxed sigh. Dipper just stood there, gazing at Mabel. He then gets himself focused. He whispered to himself, shouldn't be giving my true self away. Dipper had packed up his fishing gear and then said, well, I'm going back to the mystery shack. Guess I'll join you. Mabel said in response. The two walked through the same path that Dipper walked through before. He then grinned, knowing what he was to do next. He put a gas mask up to his face, ensuring himself not to be knocked out by the gas. Why do you have a gas mask? Where did this gas mask come from? Why does Mabel not notice any of this? I have a lot of questions already. I am not even done with the first chapter. And... Top meme. Top fucking meme. A gasping noise came over from Mabel's way as the smell has gotten to her too. The smell was awful, getting worse with every second. The hallucinations, coughing at the smell, and then collapsing next to her brother. Wait, hold on. Hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold, 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 hold the fucking phone. No, put that fucking phone down. Just, just, just chill for like five seconds, all right? Chill. 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 Why did she not notice her brother before if she apparently fell down next to him? Um, shouldn't she have been concerned the fact that her brother was kind of there unconscious on the floor? Just randomly in the middle of the woods and on a path. Shouldn't she have seen that before she actually got... Before she kind of fucking took too much weed and LSD at the same time? Like, I... Fuck, man. I, I have too many questions and not enough answers. Dipper had turned into a shadow, now into the form of Gideon. You won't be in my way. At least I'll have my cupcake back. A roaring laugh was then sidetracked by helicopter blades. The real Dipper scratched his head, wondering where he was at. The room was white all around with a doorway across the center. Obstacles of all sorts lie between him and the door. He was slightly confused with the vast room, and he couldn't go further or else he would be severely injured or even murdered. A wall displayed a splitting image of Gideon. Hello there! I suppose you thought this was the last you'd ever see of me. No, I don't want you getting in the way of me and Mabel. But that is what this room is for, keeping you away from us. Gideon said. You know I'll get out of here soon, Dipper replied. Sure you will. 
Gideon said, flicking a switch. A buzzing sound erupted from the floors. And death. So long, farewell, albeaters, and goodbye. <laughs> I can't take life seriously. Dipper felt his legs shake. Whatever Gideon set off in the room was very powerful. Parts of Dipper's body started to sting. He jumped after each shock. Gideon had set an electric floor switch. Dipper went for higher ground, trying to get away from the electricity that was soaring through the white floor. It was probably made of metal by the way it felt. He needed to think of a way to stop the floor from frying him. All he saw were chunks of metal and other small particles around him. He leaned off the edge of the boxes and grabbed a small piece of metal which zapped his hand due to the flowing electricity. Man, he is that obsessed. Dipper mumbled to himself. He threw the metal to the switch, hoping it would hit the right thing. The metal hit the off switch, causing the floors to be more compatible for walking. Dipper saw more clearly what he was up against, and he noticed a few dolls lying out on the floor. More precisely, it was five of them. Dipper laughed to himself. He knew the dolls posed no threat. Then the dolls were lifted up, glowing green, as Gideon said, Come to lift it. The dolls started to move around and then sought out their target. Dipper stepped back and gulped now, underestimating the toys. He ran away from the rampaging dolls as they thrashed everything in their path. Gideon walked away from the white room and was in a hallway. He approached Mabel as she had awoken. Gideon had pressed down on his watch and then Mabel began to glow. Forget it about me, he said simply. Mabel had ceased glowing green. She looked around the place wondering where she was. What is this place? She asked. Oh, you followed me and I'll help you. I know this place well, Gideon said. Mabel was quick to join as Gideon began to walk. Dipper had bashed the doll on its head with both of his fists as it clung to his leg. He shook his leg, getting the doll off of him. A doll jumped towards Dipper. He ducked down. The doll landed behind him and then wrapped its soft arms around Dipper's mouth and nose. For something very fragile, it had strength. Dipper was starting to lose focus as the other dolls attacked him. He held his hands on the doll's arm, getting its grip loose. He kicked the rest of the dolls away. Dipper was excited to get to the exit, but then his path was blocked by rocks. Change its landscape. The other Gideon said, Other? Hold on! There are two Gideons now? I can't even stand one Gideon. Fuck Gideon. Rocks formed everywhere in the white room. Dipper's only way out was by climbing over the rocks. That didn't seem too easy with the fragile rocks whose pieces are falling apart. Dipper scratched his chin knowing that there was an easy way out. He started climbing the rocks. The ledge was starting to break apart as Dipper put his hand on the ledge. The rock broke off making Dipper's right hand slip. He hung onto the stable piece of rock. He then pulled himself up trying to plan out his next jump. Gideon had introduced Mabel to a storage room stocked with dolls. Cool! I didn't know you liked dolls! She then nudged Gideon playfully on the shoulder. He blushed. Yes, I was planning on you and me being boyfriend and girlfriend. Maybe something even more. Gideon said ecstatically. I'd love to, Mabel said. Dipper was climbing up the last rock left to climb. He was aware of the falling pebbles that bounced off the rock. Dipper was on top of the rock and he looked down at the rest of the white room. He went for the exit in front of him. You see what I mean now? What the fuck is happening? Why is any of this happening? G Gideon can't do this shit, right? Can he? I don't fucking know. I'm... I, I am... I am lost on six different levels right now. That sounds like my life. As Dipper approached the door, he was electrocuted as his hand made contact with the doorknob. He retracted his hand, rubbing it after that painful jolt of electricity. Ow! He moaned. He didn't want to injure his hand again, so he had to think of another way to get past the door. He looked around him for something to use. He then took notice of the rocks that lied beneath his feet. He then began to throw them at the door. The rocks pounded against the metal door, but nothing happened. He needed to do something different. Exactly, he said, responding to whatever he had thought of in his head. You know, without telling the reader what the fuck's happening. Thank thanks, Arthur Chan. Thank you. Dipper carried the weight of a large rock and brought it over to the door. He began to fall back, but he caught his balance. The rock was seriously heavy, and he struggled with the rock. The rock, you know, the rock Johnson. <laughs> uh, bad jokes. This is a day of bad jokes. Dipper pushed the rock against the door. He had seen a dent in the door. He continued to pound the rock onto the door until it was loose and then fell off. Dipper was pleased with his work and walked through the doorway. Gideon had explained the dolls to Mabel, who indeed had no memory of who Gideon was. These little old guys will say things once you pull the strings, Gideon said. He tugged on the string on the back of the doll. It's just sweet to love me, the doll said. Ooh. Mabel said, picking up one of the dolls that stood out. She pulled the string, anticipated on what it would say. This is a pre-recorded message. Make sure to get rid of the- The doll was then snatched and covered up by Gideon. But these are sort of private, Gideon said nervously. Okay, Mabel said, seeming unsure. Gideon moved the doll over by a box that said, rejects. Gideon whistled. At least she didn't find out. 
Gideon had turned away to make sure of one thing. He quickly spoke his words. Would you like to go on a date? Gideon said. Back at the mystery shack, Grunkle Stan, Wendy, and Seuss were all in the lobby. Grunkle Stan was polishing his whack figure's severed head, whilst Wendy was reading a book of some sort with her feet on the counter. Seuss found some work in replacing yet another light bulb. The three really didn't seem to notice Dipper and Mabel's whereabouts. The thought of them still fishing was all that didn't make them worry. Thanks? I guess? Okay, sure. Fuck, we'll accept that. I'll, I'll, I'll pretend that none of this is happening right now. Dipper walked down a hall. He was looking for Mabel and Gideon. They couldn't have left the house, right? Well, Dipper went into the storage room chock full of dolls. He moved slowly throughout the room. The table had wooden figures placed on it. Dipper looked upon it. The Mabel and Gideon figures were together as his figure lookalike was on the ground with a pair of scissors in it. There was a small piece of paper there as well. Dipper had gasped. They're going to dinner at a restaurant? I thought Mabel didn't want to see him again, Dipper said to himself. He took account of the address and then stormed out of the house. He ran through the forest and ran by the side of the road. Dipper saw the place in front of him. He pushed the door open, ignoring the man asking for his name. Hey, get back over here, the man said. Dipper still walked into the building. He saw the two over at the far left of the restaurant. Dipper was furious. He slammed down the table that the two were seated at. Quite certainly, it got their attention. Mabel, I thought you didn't want to see him anymore. Dipper questioned his twin sister. What do you mean? I had only just met him. She responded. Dipper's jaw dropped a bit. How don't you remember? It was only a week ago. Don't be crazy, brother, Mabel said. Gideon's eyes started to twitch. Dipper couldn't believe Mabel. Why did she forget about Gideon? It was right on the tongue, but he couldn't spell it out yet. Magic. Dipper said. Gideon had revealed his watch as Dipper started to figure out the whole charade. Oh boy, you just made a turn for the worst. Gideon said. I still don't know how I feel about this. I mean, we're almost done. Fuck it. Let's read it till the end, folks. Gideon touched his watch. Dipper saw this coming. He began to glow green and then was thrown to the other side of the restaurant. He slid into the well-polished brown floors and crashed into the tables ahead of him. Wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. So Gideon now has a watch. Before he had a little pendant on his, um, he had a little pendant thing on his little tie thingy, the bobber. I don't remember what it's called, but that was what he had before and it was broken. So was this just like, he found a new magic channel-y thingy as a watch? That's lame. Fuck that, you gotta have like a cool crystal and some shit. I'm not surprised. Dipper said standing up, wiping the blood from a cut on his face. Then let's settle this, Gideon said. Get over here then, Dipper said. Gladly. Gideon smirked. He clutched his watch and reeled his hand in to pull Dipper back towards him. If you were a real fighter, you wouldn't be using that watch, Dipper said. You want little old me to play fair? Gideon said. Cut it with the little old me stuff, Dipper said. Gideon put pressure on the watch. Dipper started to choke. He held his neck still trying to get air. Mabel tackled Gideon. He fell over and there was no struggle on Dipper's neck. Wait. Hold on a second. So Gideon literally attacked Dipper in the middle of a restaurant with his sister still there and didn't expect his sister to just decide to be like, huh, this little fucking midget who I just met is attacking my brother. Maybe I should help him out. You know, logic. Thanks, sis, Dipper said, but stopped to look over to Gideon and Mabel. Why would you get in the way? Gideon said. So he was right, she said. I only wanted to get rid of your family so we could be together. Aren't you still my little marshmallow? Gideon reasoned. No. <laughs> Don't mind me. Just trying to get rid of your family. No big deal. This is a normal relationship thing. That's what all relationships are. You get rid of your family and you're together forever. Right? Right? Gideon snapped. He was like a fuse that was already set off. With a touch of his watch, the tables and chairs began to float. Oh no. Dipper cried. I just, I just realized Dipper's voice changes like every line he says. I can't get a good Dipper voice. I can't even find like one that I like. Fuck it. This is never going to be the same voice. I mean, he's a pupusant boy anyway, so fuck it. The chairs went out the window and shattered glass covered the floors. With every second, the sound had erupted. Dipper was covering himself. He needed to get to his sister. The tables had been thrown around the room. Dipper ducked and dodged the incoming tables. Dipper ran to Mabel. He was happy that I got to his sister, but now wasn't the time for an awkward sibling hug. Gideon was smiling evilly. I'm bringing this place down, Gideon said. What? Dipper and Mabel said at the same time. 
Gideon destroyed the rock that kept this cliffside restaurant up. As the rocks began to tumble, people started to head for the exit. They managed to get out alive. Why, why, why is this place being kept up by one rock? Why is this place on a cliffside? I'm pretty sure that breaks a lot of like safety protocols, sir. Sir, this isn't, that's not. Was there a restaurant on the side? On like the side of a cliff that's held by rocks? I don't remember this restaurant being there. Sir, I have questions for you. Gideon punched Dipper across the face. Dipper moved back and Gideon reached for Mabel. He put his arm around her neck. He tried to stay upright as the place was going down the hill. It slid against the rock and continued that way. One move and she'll be thrown out of here, Gideon said. I thought you loved her, Dipper said. Are you that insane? Gideon started to realize. He began to let go of Mabel. He didn't think of this as an obviously a trick, but then Mabel punched him. He regained his focus and was ready to use his watch. Mabel fired the grappling hook at the watch and yanked it off. The hook had the watch in its grasp. It retracted back to her. You don't have your powers anymore. Again, Dipper said. Gideon had clenched his fist. The restaurant was almost at the forest area. Everyone couldn't keep their balance and then they were all down. They had started to roll off of the window, hitting the ground as the restaurant followed behind. Dipper had been out of it once he reached the ground. The same happened to Gideon and Mabel. A rock had got in the way of the restaurant. As soon as it reached the rocket, it had stopped. Pieces of the restaurant began to fly around the area. Men quickly swarmed the three. They got them onto a helicopter. Grunkle, Stan, Wendy, and Seuss were quick to arrive as the doctor shook his head side to side. The wreckage was inevitable. Dread and sorrow was quick to settle in. After a week since then, inside the mystery shack, the place wasn't as cheerful as usual. I miss that cat noise he made. Wendy said, slightly chuckling. And that hat on top of his head, Sue said. It'll be hard telling the parents, Grunkle Stan said. The other was a lot of fun. Always doing something ridiculous, said Wendy. I hope to see them someday, Grunkle Stan said. Seuss reached for a box and was happier. I found them, he said. The box was labeled, Matt the Top Hat Cat and Fun O'Cake. The items were dolls of the characters from that popular kids show, but the thing is, why do they have that? Oh good, so we have an easier phone call conversation about selling that. The door opened, Dipper and Mabel were back. They were done with placing more signs in the forest. We're done, Dipper said exhausted. Man, last week was crazy, Mabel said. Yeah, so what happened last week with you two and Gideon to be all beat up with a restaurant broken in peace at the bottom of a hill? Grunkle Stan questioned. Gideon, Dipper said. Gideon, Mabel repeated. Gideon again, Grunkle Stan said. What? What? Sorry, hold on, hold on. I don't think I made this clear. What? I am... Um, I went from six different types of confused to like 20 different types of confused. What the fuck just happened? What did I just read? Like, this isn't like the whole Sonic and Frozen what the fuck did I read? Or like Grand Theft Hoonie Pop that I read, like what the fuck did I read? This is like... This is like, you know, this was like, okay, whatever. But I just did not understand what the fuck was happening that entire time. Like, that was just an emotion of fucking, like, <laughs> emotion. That was just, like, a roller coaster of fucking emotions. Like, oh, my God. I don't, I, I don't even, fuck, man. But, yeah, that was, that was for love. I don't know what that I do with anything. I think that's the end of the story. Yeah, that's the end of the story. Fuck, I don't even know. I'm doing my life. But either way, hope you guys enjoyed this story. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section below because I want to know what y'all think, because I, I don't know what I think about it. I, I have no idea. But thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, check out my other videos. Recommend me stories, fan fictions, fandoms for fan fictions. I don't fucking know. Just recommend me shit, because I'm always on the lookout. And you all see what I find. It's fucking weird as shit. Don't forget to make bad life choices. I'll see y'all next time. Goodbye, my lovelies.